And we're back. Hello, everyone. This is Mr. 13 Things for We40Kids.com, talking, picking up on the discussion of quaternion rotation. And I don't profess to be an expert on quaternion rotation or use of quaternions, but I am an expert in debating the concept of the lattice method with K-12 uh, teachers basically and parents and actually my own kids so so we're looking at the interface between these two and I'm just basically trying to build a justification for or a reverse engineering of why I think those crazy people at University of Chicago in everyday math and a lot of others uh, stick the lattice method in and are so um, high on it they don't even maybe know why but it has to do with uh, splitting a number into its component parts and multiplying each part by the other part. Something like that, as Vi Hart uh, says. Uh, and if you haven't seen Vi Hart, <laughs> leave this video right now and go look at Vi Hart videos and you'll be much better off for it. Or her father, George Hart. So let's remember the quaternion for the point. We're just going to basically make the real portion for the point is going to be the real portion. is going to be equal to 0 and the vector is going to be, I'll write it this way, something i plus something j plus something k, right, the components. And these are actually, they're not, you notice I'm not putting the vectors here, but the, basically you are mapping the i, j, and k in three-dimensional space to these imaginary numbers i, j, and k with i squared equal to j squared equal to k squared equal to i j k equal to minus one and that is a mind blower we're now instead going to talk about the quaternion the rotation quaternion so the rotation quaternion which is used along with its conjugate in the sandwich product we're going to talk about how we get the rotation quaternion and so the two inputs are right the angle of spin and the axis vector right the axis vector is a unit vector right and the alpha is what we're going to call the angle of rotation. So how do you get this unit vector from an axis vector? Well, let's see if we can think about it here in terms of a ball. Okay, we're going to draw, draw a coordinate system. And forgive me if I do this wrong, but I'm going to try to do it. Red is x, green is y and blue and if this is throwing you go look at your game console this is pretty much standard green is y red is x and z is blue and so we're going to kind of draw a ball in here i'll try to go back to white I'm coming over here to the side which you don't see i'm going and using the sound the uh i have to get to the corner i'm using the color sucker if you want to talk about on smooth draw and I'm going to draw kind of up a ball in here I'm not a very good artist in 3d space right it kind of goes around here and goes around so we have a ball here and eventually we're going to look at some point right here and we're going to rotate it about some axis that runs something like that so that axis is going to have an x component a y component and a z component right so we're going to be rotating this point a certain alpha, a certain angle about this axis. Right, so that point's going to kind of turn to another point in 3D space. So um, what are our inputs? We need to do the x, y, and z of our point. We need to know, since this is going through the 0, 0, we just need to know one point on this vector. And then we do something called normalizing the vector to get the unit vector. However, 
to make it a little bit easier, let's just think about what the coordinates are if this ball had a radius of one. And so the coordinates would be here. I'm going to put these in a vector format. The, the coordinate there is x is one, y is zero, and z is zero. The coordinate here is x is zero, y is one, and z is zero. And the coordinate there is zero, zero, one. And if you think about it, the magnitude of any one of these vectors is one, the length is. And so if you pick a, a point anywhere on this ball, right, the length of the vector from zero, zero, zero to that point is going to be one. And you can kind of think about it, prove it or whatever you want to do. We're assuming a sphere here, so that shouldn't throw you when we start talking about ellipses, etc. Um, so it will also work on an elliptical space as long as you have the axis defined. Mathematically, you're going to see later, this axis can be calculated by your standard angles, which is going to be the angle from the x-axis, which is going to go around this way, and then the angle um, up to the z, etc. But really, we don't even want to think about that per se as much as what are the coordinates of that point. Let's assume those coordinates are um, x sub a, y sub a, and z sub a. So we're going to call that the axis vector. All right. So to get the unit vector, we take this magnitude, the magnitude of this, Divide this by its magnitude. Here's the crazy nutty part. If I want to get the absolute value or the magnitude of a vector, what do we do? We take the vector transpose. So I'm going to say axis vector. It's going to be axis vector transpose times the axis vector, right? And then take its square root. Try it in a calculator, and we'll do it when we get going. You're going to take the vector, right, transposed, times the vector, and take the square root. That's the dot product. And that will give you, take the square root, that will give you the magnitude. So what you do is then take that value, divide this by that value, and you get what? The unit vector the unit vector of the axis. Now, you're not done yet with, when it comes to quaternion, but you're awfully close. All right? Let's assume, let's assume now that alpha equals 30 degrees or, if you would, pi over 6. All right? And we'll see why we're doing that a little bit. So now, what is going to be the value of our quaternion? So in this case, the quaternion is going to be equal to the cosine of alpha over 2. Oh my gosh, now you start to understand why you learn the values for pi over 12. So the cosine of 15 degrees, so is the cosine is, believe it or not, 0 0.9658. Go look it up. That's what it is. That's the real portion. And then the sine is 0 0.2588. Again, the sine of alpha over 2 times basically what? Uh, if, if we're going to think about it being a unit of xa, ya, and za, assuming that's the unit vector. All right. So you get the quaternion for multiplication by taking the cosine of alpha over 2 plus the sine of alpha over 2 times the unit vector describing the axis. Let me say it again. You get the rotation quaternion by taking the cosine of the angle of rotation divided by 2. In other words, the cosine of the quantity of the angle divided by 2. And you get the plus the sine of the angle divided by 2 times the unit vector of the axis of spin. The conjugate is going to be the minus. 
So that minus that. And those two things together put into the sandwich products is going to get you the rotated point. Now, obviously by my handwriting and the like, I'm going to want students or others to redo this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and then show you how it works in SketchUp. And as well as look at a little bit of code in processing. Right? People like me should not be writing things too much unless we learn to talk a little slower and write things out, which I will do. So the next time we sit down, we're going to actually go through and do a calculation um, on a sphere, which is a unit sphere and a given point. Uh, and then we can eventually go back to that concept that any sphere is the unit sphere made larger or smaller, tying you back to the concept that every circle is the unit circle made larger or smaller. All circles are similar. All spheres are similar. Those huge concepts that seem so obvious, perhaps, way back in geometry or way ahead in geometry, but which are also pretty obvious the first time you play Call of Duty and have to kind of turn around in all kinds of different directions to throw hand grenades or even Super Mario Brothers in 2D space. Thanks for listening. This is Mr. 13 Things, or Silence Did Good, on we40kids.com.